Hello there guys, my name is JL Gimpy Dwarf and welcome back to another episode of the Space Engineer Spotlights. So in front of me we are looking at, yes, another Dark Lord build. Basically, a week or two ago I was speaking with Dark Lord, I did a bit of an interview and I asked him, does he have any ships in the making at the moment? And he said, yes, I've got a carrier. And being as I'm making a carrier of my own, and well, two types, and he's put this on the workshop I figured it really tied in quite nicely to get to like gather some ideas on what I should maybe take and use in my designs and maybe take and you know adjust and alter to suit me so what are we looking at right in front of our faces this is the Manta assault carrier it has 22 missile turrets 32 Gatlin turrets, 88 interior turrets, which he classes as um, like missile defense systems because they're quite small and shoot moving objects. And it also has 8 assemblers, 2 refineries, 9 connectors, and it has a capacity to carry 14 mantids or stingrays. So this thing is huge, and the way it loads up its ships is quite smart because it's well defended and it's you know quite interesting so I think without further ado we'll get into it so this ship itself is quite large I believe it's like 42 million tons or whatever and it's got enough power to move it he does claim it's quite slow and we'll test that in a bit but uh, it's I'd say adequately powered in all fairness adequately you know thrusted it, it seems to be I don't know, very slimline, very flat, which is something that Dark Lord always does with his builds. He tends to make them quite flat and hard to hit. I don't know, it's it's just, the design is quite nice. And I like this whole, hey, you've got the engines facing engines, but they're far enough away that they won't do any damage to each other. So behind here we've actually got two Titan thrusters, which move it forwards in this very sort of nice, confined sort of space. And it's, you know, just gorgeous to look at in every sort of angle I do like the use of orange just to offset all the other different colors and there's like little hidden like engine bays and things that you find and you think oh what's in here could there be a door and you go no it's more engines it's very well sort of worked out I think so within this middle section that I haven't flown down yet we actually have the, the sort of bays to park and this is what he has inside now this is just brilliant I mean I'm unsure about if they are actually connected or not I don't think they are but either way these look gorgeous his ships just I don't know they, they look absolutely amazing in every sort of angle and I'm not like fanboying or anything but they do you know look gorgeous and I do believe is this a door system don't say that's a door system Oh, Dark Lord, you absolute babe. Now, I look through these builds, I, I kind of skip over things just so I find um, you know amazing things with you guys. But that is absolutely friggin' amazing. The way he's got all of these to have individual bays that close up and allow for blast protection is just awesome. And the way he's used the pistons as well, he's actually put a piston by the side and then he's put like, you know, the door down there, which I may actually take that and incorporated into the new carriers that I'm building because that is something I've been looking for for a while and thank you Dark Lord you absolute babe so all these bays I believe are the same they go all the way down and they've got some protection as well which is good he's, he's actually made for what if the enemy get inside well they'll get absolutely shot up when they're in here so let us go into the front sections first and see what's in here we open this airlock again, nice little airlocks, and I think he's taking on board some of the things I've said, so hopefully we'll see some toilets with some basins, which would be nice. So, we come through, and we close that door behind us, and we're now in what looks to be, oh, an engine compartment room. Oh, wow, this is quite nicely compact. So he's actually got the engines sort of f further forward. I'm hoping to assist engines at the back. Oh, well, reactors at the back, just, just in case these ones do get shot up a little bit. But it does look adequately armoured. So that's that's pr that's pretty nifty. Let's go up here. And what we got here? So we come across and we've actually got gyroscopes sort of contained in here. Areas where we can actually get up to see the reactors and repair them if need be. And we've, we're then on to the... Um, 
But then add to the actual sage industrial thruster, you can actually stand on top of it. So I'm guessing this is for the purposes of fixing it up as well as sort of making it look quite nice in here. It's very nice to use the, the blocks aesthetics indoors rather than outdoors, you know, and mix it up a little bit. But you can actually come here and, you know, repair if need be, if that's broken. So that's pretty cool. Everything's nicely opened up and it's, you know, it's very nicely packed away into this sort of smallish package in all fairness so nothing there a bit of a dead end so that is the first bit now if I'm right in thinking this thing is, uh, is mirrored so we don't have to go to the other side and see that but uh, I'm, I'm gonna guess that so let's close those doors and we'll keep moving down I think so I'll just go up round and down got some more of these these ships are gorgeous in every I've already said it, but um, yeah, this is just beautiful from what I'm seeing at the moment. We've actually got a green door here. What do green doors indicate? Is this another airlocked area? I'm just going to open it all up. Ooh, check that out. So we've actually got double glazing. That's 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 pretty. I didn't actually see that. Hmm, weird. What's in here? Hey hey, is this the toilet? Oh look at it. He's actually got the toilet. And the basin, and the shower, all in one. Brilliant! Thank you, Dark Lord, for for bringing that into into the build. That that's made my day. And we also have bedding here, so a bit of a living quarters for the pilots, which is cool. So I'm guessing green is the living quarters in his little, you know, sort of dictionary of meanings for colours. So we'll close that. I'm guessing that's the same on the other side as well. Yeah, there's a green door. We've only got the one section kitted out with the ships as well, just to note. So the other end is empty. We get down onto number eight, and then we have a blue door. What is the blue door for? It's bluish purple, isn't it? Yeah, it's purple more than anything. We'll come through here. Come through here. Oh, and then we have like a, I think it's like a health bay. So in here we've got. All this other guns. Oh, and it actually moves onto the ship by the looks of it. So we've got. I like this window design. I'm gonna have to actually have to have a look outside to see what the hell I, you know, how the hell I miss those windows. We got basins again for cleaning your hands for sanitary reasons. Got beds, and we've got a nice med bay here just to, you know. I think that's actually conveyed up. He conveys them up in. I, I'm thinking he conveys them up in the thought that they will be used. And you will need to provide materials to the med bays, which is good. It's thinking about the future, which is really, really good to see. So that continues up there. And if we just go out here, I know I've missed the door. I'll be going back to that one in a second. So this just ends, and this is where the cockpit is up there. So we'll actually head back through that med bay area and walk down that corridor, which takes us to somewhere. So come back through here, back around here, and down. So what is here? What is exactly here? We've got some control panels here. Are there any con any controls set up on these? No, so these are just blank ones. They're not fitted out for any purpose. He does fit some of them out with purposes if need be. Um, what you guys have got to understand with is going through every panel and placing you know specific things for that specific panel is a very tedious job. And you know if you can't think of a reason to have a panel that you know you you don't, you don't really put any sort of use to it you just kind of make a use for it if you ever use the ship and fly it outside of you know outside of just showing it off and looking around it and playing it maybe in survival so that's like a command bridge of sorts to control sort of what the ships are coming in and out and then we've got a cargo container here which will allow us access to the whole ship which is nice oh my god so many things in there and we come through here and drop down. We've got a nice little canteen area with some a coffee machine, fridges, and all the necessary all the necessary things to eat in and with. And we can have a sit down and sort of enjoy ourselves as pilots, and then get ready to fly, which is really nice. Up here, there's nothing up there. It's just uh, the conveyors. And we come through this door. And where are we? Where where are we? So I think we're in the at uh, that yeah. So here is the end of that walkway section for the ships. That's pretty cool. So we've got multiple ac access routes, which is nice, and airlocked on everything, which is very, very good. Where do we get to? There we go. So we come through here, and we come through there, didn't we? Yes. So 
This is like just a random toilet here. It's just a random toilet sitting there, very randomly. Maybe just for purposes of quickness, just jump in there, go to the toilet. And we've actually got the Titan engines here. Ah, well that's, that's a pretty nice view actually. So we've got the Titan engines sitting up there looking pro as ever. And looking very, very beautiful, allowing you to see into there to see if, the, you know, if they're damaged or not. Of course, custom models don't actually take proper damage yet. But that's a pretty cool thing to see in there, a bit of decoration as well, using the blocks to their advantage. And we come through the... Is this an orange door or is it just a white door? Okay, so this is like a bit of a shower room, that's why the toilet was open on the other side. So we've got a bit like showers here, all conveyored with a cargo container there, just in case you want to grab anything. A little desk there, so you can put, put odds and ends in there. And we come through the red doors, what do red doors indicate? Oh, we got the assemblers and the refinery section. Now this, as I said, has six assemblers and two refineries in here. So you can craft up ammunition and things like that. And here we go, here's the uh, refineries sitting up here. Look, again, very nicely sort of enclosed, but it's left bits open so you can see what it is and what it does. Can't access it through any other means rather than, um, you know, going through panels and things, which, I don't know... I like to have a face that I can jump into and get into the actual machine because if the conveyor breaks while well, the ship's being shot and you need to say craft a gun or you need to craft some materials you can't get into this without grinding down things around it to get in. So that's only one little thing but you know in the grand scheme of things that wouldn't really matter because the ship is quite adequately armoured to take such a beating so that's quite nice and we'll close that and again we've got the assemblers here, so like a little assembly room, we've got the Titan engine there just coming up to the end of it and where are we going now? Where shall we go? Been through those two doors so there's only one way and the only way is up so we go up here again conveyors everywhere, I love how everything is connected every last little inch is connected to something which is nice, ooh wow this is a, v ooh wow this is a very nice room. So this is the main control area. Yeah, he's got like a middle deck, which is, well, a bottom deck, which is for I don't know, maybe just general f piloting, and you can actually see directly down the ship. A lot of the ships I'm building, you can see directly in front of you, and I like how he's actually tried to maintain that, so you can actually still see what the hell is in front of you without using cameras, because the camera gets shot or the camera's damaged, you can't see, and you have to rely on people telling you where to go. So. This is like the upper decks, which is very, very well done as well. I like this. I really do like this. So he's got screens up and down, and he's got his sort of the co-pilots who can sit up here and monitor things, maybe have weapons ready to go. Again, nothing really assigned to those. Again, there's not a lot of turrets that you can really assign to this because there's not a lot of custom turrets. They're just the standard ones or modded. Well, they're not modded, actually. They're all standard cannons, which is cool. So, where do we go now? What's in the back? In the back we have beds for the pilots, I would guess, and we've got some sort of changing area here. Is it the same on the other side? That is the question. Oh no it isn't actually, oh that, that's mixed up a little bit, it's got beds and we've also got a chair. Chair's the wrong way and I believe if I stood in this I'd probably glitch out. But we've gone back to the conventional toilet there with the shower. No basin but you could wash your hands in the shower I guess. So we'll come through here again, close the door, close the door, and then what we will do is we'll come down, and we'll drop back down again, and what we got, we've actually got again more, well we've actually got up the ship reactors with the grav generator here, which is nicely centred. And then we've got conveyors on conveyors on, oh my god, well, look at all this power, this is that back section that sticks out. There's a lot of power going into this thing, and he's actually tried to use the normal reactors to power everything rather than using the in somewhat potentially overpowered reactors. So that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And we come up here. We've already been up here. Doi J. Doi. So, is there anything else we need to really look at before we get on to having a bit of a crash test on this thing? I know the stairs and down this way as well, but I think it's all the same. Yeah, I think it's all the same. So, that is 
it for this area. Now, I'm going to probably have to use one of my own ships because I can't really shoot this ship up with the ship of its, of its own. I may actually crash them into each other, which may be something interesting to do. So I'll set that up and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so I have the uh, ship prepared. This is the ship I'm actually going to be crashing into. I have the top ship. I'm actually going to start flooring it now and we're going to see what happens because I don't know what these two ships are going to do. I don't know how fast the, the one ship's going to get up to really. So it should be quite interesting to see, I guess. Um, hopefully I don't miss either. I, I'm aiming for the middle. Here we go, world's slowest crash impact test ever. And we've kinda oh 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 no. <laughs> and we're breaking. So ever so slowly. I've also broke my computer in terms of frames. Okay, so we are just gonna reverse this now I think to see the true extent of the damage. Uh, it seems to have ploughed through to the other side. It didn't hit the cockpit, which is good. Um, because the centre of this ship is just, uh, in 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 sort of ship terms, it's, it's kind of dead weight. You could lose the front end of this ship and you'd still be okay to fly because you've got still reverse thrusters on the back end of the ship, which is good. But I actually think we've still got hull breaches. And I know you guys have said that hull breaches don't really matter in this game at the moment. But they do because you know it's it's an important thing to know on a spaceship sorry the the, sh the other ship was randomly going down for some reason a bit confused as to why but it's sort of sorted itself out now so with these frames oh my god all these frames holy poop I'm just gonna go through and have a look and assess the damage so as I said we kind of just narrowly avoided by by oh god here we go that's going to hit something uh, we kind of narrowly avoided the front end of the ship but I don't actually think we've gone that far through have we I mean we've broken the reactor rooms here a lot of stuff has come free which is quite worrying because it's not I don't know whatever we've hit it wasn't tied on very well it was only tied on on one face which isn't the best. I know gyroscopes can only attach them to one face, but still we've got some debris floating around which could be a potential hazard if you know people were to be in the way of it and you could potentially get hit by it. But we've took massive damage to the well the crew ship area, which again it's dead weight from I'd say I don't know this point it's dead weight. Whatever is on that front end, you'll lose some power, but you've got backup power in, in the back of this. So whatever is from here onwards is kind of dead weight to the ship. The only thing it is there for is to carry other ships. So I don't know that kind of plays to its advantage because if it does get if it does get hit, then this happens. <laughs> and as you see on the other ship, ramming isn't exactly the best thing to do because it's taken out a lot of the ship's main sort of power supplies and gyros and things like that and it's it's just absolutely made a mess which isn't the best so I think that's really it I mean we've broken through the bottom but it doesn't really matter again dead weight it doesn't really matter that you've hit through the bottom it's it's just you know it's, it's absorbed the impact it definitely has because it hasn't gone all the way through and the ceilings of the hull well, the, the, the whole ceilings have sort of taken the brunt of the damage and the force, which is good. And overall, I think that, that was quite an interesting view on things. Um, I've never really crashed two carries before. Never really got 11 frames on a game before, but... You know... <laughs> it's, all, it's all it's all in, in good gameplay, I guess, and good testing. So, that is it. So, if you guys have enjoyed this, then please like, favorite, and of course subscribe for more. Don't forget to leave any sort of comments and suggestions in this video. Dark Lord does look at the videos, so if you guys want to maybe give him some thoughts and opinions on the ship, then put them in the comment section. 
and I guarantee that you know he'll be putting this video onto his workshop page anyway so you guys will see it and be able to comment and say what you liked what you disliked and what things could be potentially tweaked and changed so I'll see you guys later peace